Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we have the comparison that many of you have asked for, and it wasn't one that I was going to do. Now, this is very much a viewer requested benchmark. Now, as you might have expected, we've already looked at the Ryzen 7 5000X 3D in quite a bit of detail, from our day one review to numerous comparisons with other high end AMD and Intel processors. But missing from all that data has been older Ryzen 5 parts, parts that many of you are still using. Now, from the comments, it sounds like many of you are planning a final AM4 upgrade and you're interested in going all out on the 5800X 3D, which can currently be had for the $450 US MSRP. And we already know it is a cracking good gaming CPU. So today we'll be comparing it with the Ryzen 5 3600 and I'll also throw in the Ryzen 5 5600 data as well for an extra comparison. But before I do, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their new 12th gen CPU contact frame by Debauer. It's well known that the integrated loading mechanism or ILM of the LJ1700 sockets bends 12th gen CPUs, leading to an uneven contact surface that reduces cooling performance. Solving this issue, the contact frame replaces the ILM, allowing for a much more even contact with the CPU's IHS and the base of your cooler, which in turn reduces operating temperatures. Installation's quick and easy, and thanks to the use of anodized aluminium, the contact frame is non-conductive. And then, for those of you who wish to further maximize contact, Thermal Grizzly now offers an optional lapping tool, so for more information, please check the link in the video description. For testing, I'll be covering 23 games at 1080p and 1440p using both the Radeon RX 6950 XT and 6600 XT with SAM enabled. The motherboard used for all this testing is the old MSI B350 Tomahawk using the latest BIOS revision based on the AGESA 1.2.0.7 microcode, which enables resizable BIOS support along with support for Ryzen 5000 series processors. Then we have 32GB of DDR4-3200CL14 dual rank dual channel memory, and this same configuration was used for testing all Ryzen processors. So, with those details out of the way, let's go over about a dozen of the games tested, and then we'll take a look at the 23 game average, but please note all 23 graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Counter-Strike Global Offensive, we find the 1% lows of the 5800X 3D are improved by 81% from the 3600, while the average frame rate was boosted by 55% from 245 FPS up to 380 FPS. I have heard that more serious CSGO players like to target up over 300 FPS, so if that happens to be you, then the 5800X 3D will be a worthwhile upgrade over the 3600. It's also interesting to note that although the 5600 and 5800X3D are much closer when it comes to average frame rate performance, the 3D V-Cache model still boosted 1% lows by a massive 55% margin. Moving on to ACC, we find the 5600 offers a reasonable step forward from the 3600, increasing the 1% lows by 22% and the average frame rate by 25%, margins that were once considered very massive but they pale in comparison to what's seen with the 5800X 3D. Get this, it increased frame rates from the 3600 by 95% with the 6950XT at 1080p. That is complete madness. Even with the 6600XT installed, we're looking at gains between 90 and 100% at 1080p, and even up to 60% at 1440p. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, which is a title that's typically GPU limited well before CPU performance becomes an issue, at least when running a modern processor. That said, using the 6950XT at 1080p saw the 5800X 3D race ahead by up to a 55% margin, hitting 171 FPS on average. Now, though the game did become far more GPU bound at 1440p, the 1% 1 lows were still 30% greater using the 3D vCache part when compared to the 3600. And it wasn't until we hit 1440p with the 6600 XT that margins closed up to basically nothing. Dying Light 2 is a single player title that relies heavily on GPU performance and therefore doesn't lean on the CPU all that much. In extreme conditions, the 5800X3D was able to improve 1% lows, but really the Ryzen 5 3600 is more than sufficient for this sort of title. So depending on the games you're playing, the upgrade won't always be that significant or really an upgrade at all. F1 2021 plays very well on the Ryzen 5 3600, but if you're after even more performance, the 5600 will probably have you covered. But if you want to go all out, the 5800X 3D is seen here to be delivering up to 111% more performance with the 6950XT at 1080p. Quite incredible, really. 
Then with the 6600 XT, we're still seeing up to a 47% boost at 1080p, and they're just 9% bump at the much more GPU limited 1440p resolution. Far Cry 6 is an unusual game, or rather, maybe not a very well optimized game I should say, as it only very lightly utilizes the CPU, causing an artificial CPU bottleneck. The extra L3 cache of the 5000X 3D though does help to extend performance further, whereas the 5600 just, it's not an upgrade at all for 3600 owners. So using the 6950 XT at 1080p saw the 5000X 3D delivering up to 40% stronger performance. Forza Horizon 5, like Dying Light 2, it's not a very CPU demanding game, but unlike Far Cry 6, it doesn't really need to be. The Ryzen 5 3600 is very capable here, driving over 200 FPS with the 6950 XT at both 1440p and 1080p. Still, the 5800X 3D was up to 30% faster, hitting 271 FPS on average, with 1% lows of 224 FPS. That margin is reduced to 15% at 1440p, and then we see very little difference between them when using the 6600 XT. Moving on to Hitman 3, this is another game that doesn't exactly need hundreds of frames per second, but if you're still wanting to get as many frames per second as possible, you'll appreciate the 5800X 3D, as it was 41% faster than 3600, seen when comparing the average frame rate. Then at 1440p, the 5800X 3D was 20% faster, seen when looking at the 1% lows. Interestingly, that margin opens up to 28% with the 6600 XT at 1080p, and we even see a 12% performance advantage at 1440p for the 5800X 3D. The Rift Breaker is a very CPU demanding game that's particularly sensitive to cache performance. As a result, the 5800X 3D was up to 106% faster than the 3600, seen when comparing the 1% low data at 1080p with the 6950XT. Still, even with the 6600XT, the 5800X 3D enabled up to 73% greater performance and even 42% stronger performance at 1440p. Now, Rainbow Six Extraction, that can be played at hundreds of frames per second, even with the Ryzen 5 3600. So the 5800X 3D, it has little to offer here. We're almost always going to be GPU limited, and those limits are found at extremely high frame rates, so any of these CPUs should work well in this title. Watch Dogs Legion, now this is a CPU demanding game, and we see that while the 5600 was 14% faster than the 3600, the 5800X 3D is up to 85% faster, pushing the average frame rate for the 6950XT at 1080p out to 174 FPS. Even at 1440p, the 5800X 3D was 65% faster, though the margin did shrink to 23% with the 6600XT at 1080p. Okay, so here we have the 23 game average, and as you can see, when more CPU limited, the 5800X 3D offers Ryzen 5 3600 owners massive performance gains. Using the 6950XT at 1080p, we see on average 48% greater 1% lows, with average frame rates boosted by 46%. And even at 1440p, the 5800X 3D provided up to 35% greater performance on average. Now, as you'd probably expect to see, the margins with the 6600XT are greatly reduced, but even so, at 1080p, the 5800X 3D was on average up to 24% faster, but then just 13% faster at 1440p. Looking at the 1% lows between the various games tested with the 6950XT, we see that the 5800X 3D could, under the right conditions, more than double frame rates seen in F1 2021 and the Rift Breaker. We also saw over 70% performance gains in 7 of the 23 games tested, with most games showing over a 50% uplift, hence the 51% gain on average. There were just five games where the margin was less than 20%, and two of them were heavily GPU limited. Basically, when you need the CPU power, the 5800X 3D will offer big performance gains for 3600 owners. Of course, if you don't have the right GPU to fully unleash the power of the 5800X 3D, or you're not interested in using low quality settings, the gains are going to be a lot smaller, and we see that here with the 6600 XT. That said, heavily CPU bound titles such as ACC or CSGO will still greatly benefit from the upgrade to the 5800 X3D. Well, Ryzen 5 3600 owners, they certainly stand to gain a lot of extra performance from upgrading to the 5800 X3D, assuming they have a capable GPU or they're targeting lower quality settings, perhaps for competitive shooters as an example. I have to admit though, I was a bit puzzled after so many 3600 owners requested this comparison. After all, we are talking about a three-year-old Ryzen 5 processor that started life at like $200 US and was often sold for much less than that. 
So why would these buyers be interested in a CPU upgrade that costs twice as much? But having thought about it, I think I understand. Firstly, had you invested in an Intel platform with the aim of upgrading every three to five years, so let's just say when it makes sense, you'd be faced with having to buy a new motherboard anyway. So at at least $100 US there, $150 if you want a decent board, then combine that cost with a $200 to $250 CPU, and you're at $350 to $400. So not miles off the $450 asking price of the 5800X 3D. Then there's the upgrade itself. We know most of you will upgrade your graphics card when you can get a 40 to 50% uplift at a similar price. But achieving that kind of improvement for gaming from a CPU, well, it's almost unheard of. AM4 is also at the end of the line. So you can either upgrade now and still enjoy big performance gains or wait around until Zen 4 makes sense and then dump your platform for a full upgrade. And it's not even clear if the first wave of Zen 4 CPUs will be faster than the 5800X 3D for gaming. And of course, you'll also need to buy some DDR5 memory, making that upgrade significantly more expensive. So if you've managed to get two to three years out of your Ryzen 5 3600, and you're now able and willing to go all out on the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, how much of an upgrade is the fastest AM4 CPU for gaming? Well, as it turns out, it's a lot faster, as we just saw. And for those of you running into CPU-bound situations, the 5800X 3D will solve that while seeing you out for at least the next two to three years. Now, normally, I'd just recommend the Ryzen 5 5600 as a smart Zen 3 upgrade. But as we found previously for 3600 owners, it's not a huge step forward. And in many instances, the performance uplift is going to be fairly negligible. After all, it was only 17% faster on average at 1080p using a Radeon RX 6950 XT, whereas the 5800X 3D was 46% faster. So if you already have a Zen 2 Ryzen 5 7 or 9 processor and you're primarily gaming, you probably want at least a Ryzen 7 5700X, and it costs $280 US, but as we found recently, it is only about 5% faster than the 5600. So at that point, you might as well go the full hog, get the 5800X 3D and be done with it. And I think that's where most of you are right now. So that being the case, I hope this video was useful. And if it was, well, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Harbour Box community member, we do have Floatplane or Patreon. Links for those are in the video description. You'll get access to a monthly live stream with Tim and myself. We do one of those at least every month, uh, at least one every month. And we have an exclusive Discord server for members only. Uh, behind the scenes content q a so a lot of cool stuff there if you're interested check it out as i said the links are in the video description but if not perfectly fine and i would like to thank you for watching this video i'm your host steve and i'll see you again next time